Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Congress has begun impeachment proceedings against the IRS chief. An appeals court has ruled Muslims cannot pelt Christians with rocks for preaching the gospel. And a Muslim leader says Muslims have the right to kill people who disrespect Islam. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Congress has begun impeachment proceedings against the IRS chief. The Washington Times reports that House Oversight and Government Reform Committee Chairman Jason Chavitz, the congressman, has now begun the impeachment process against the Internal Revenue Service Commissioner John Koskinen. He did this last Tuesday, accusing the IRS boss of misleading the public and destroying documents that were sought under a congressional subpoena. It was the latest move in the battle over the targeting of Tea Party groups that must pay extra taxes after the IRS agency unfairly discriminated against conservatives. Less than a week earlier, the Justice Department issued a report finding no criminal behavior. Of course, the Obama administration is trying to sweep this under the rug in their decision that top IRS officials uh, are now subject to conservative groups of and intensive scrutiny. Among the specific charges leveled by Mr. Chavitz and 18 of his fellow Republicans on that committee were that the IRS boss, Mr. Koskinen, appointed by President Obama in December of 2013 after the targeting scandal broke, that this man was appointed to mislead Congress when he said that he had turned over all of the former IRS senior executive Lois Lerner's emails. Of course, that was a false claim. Many of them were destroyed when her hard drives got lost. And that he oversaw destruction of evidence when his agency got rid of those backup tapes that contained the emails. It was unclear how far the resolution would go in a Congress that is now preoccupied with many other fights and a little more than a year to go in President Obama's presidency. But this impeachment resolution says, the IRS knew as early as February of 2014 that Ms. Lerner's messages were missing as a result of a reported computer hard drive crash, but the agency didn't notify Congress until June and the backup tapes were destroyed in March. The IRS released a brief unsigned statement that said, quote, the IRS vigorously disputes the allegations in the resolution. We have fully cooperated with all of the investigations. Yeah, right. Hours before the impeachment resolution was introduced, Mr. Koskinen, the IRS boss, told a Senate hearing that he has personally taken steps to try to clean up the mess left by his predecessors in this conservative targeting scandal. Mr. Koskinen, the man who's under fire said, quote, the chain of command all the way down has changed. There are new people that have gone through and we've pursued appropriate disciplinary review as needed, end quote. He also admitted that his agency is still holding up a handful of Tea Party groups applications for nonprofit status including the one that has been waiting for nearly six years. This according to the Washington Times. Well, that's the news. Our thanks to the Times for that report. You know, there is perhaps a spirit of corruption in the Obama administration. I'm not gonna say that it's with this new boss, but certainly with the old regime, right? Lois Lerner openly discriminating against all of those conservative groups by delaying or denying their tax exempt nonprofit applications. And when she was asked to call account for this, she stood before Congress and said, I plead the fifth, because she didn't want to incriminate herself. 
and then all of her emails were somehow lost. And then they found them. They were on these backup tapes, these secret hard drive servers. Reminds me of Hillary Clinton's missing hard drive servers, right? But then they were confirmed to be destroyed after they were demanded subpoenaed by Congress. So now there is some corruption. There is some cover up. There is some hiding of the evidence from Congress, from the people. These, these IRS chiefs now, even the new ones are not accountable to the people who have through their elected representatives demanded transparency and all we get in, in response is hypocrisy. And that we believe is a demonic spirit of corruption. Jesus talked about this when Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be made known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light. Whatever you have spoken in the ear and in the inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. Let's pray. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name against this demonic spirit of corruption which is inside some people in our government that would say to the people, you do not have a right to fairness. And when your bias is discovered, we're gonna destroy the evidence. We're gonna hide these documents from the people and we're gonna protect our own. Father, that is hypocrisy. And Father, we ask that you would expose it, that you would proclaim justice from the housetops and give fair consideration to all those conservative groups, including many Christian groups that are applying for tax exempt status. We pray in Jesus name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, an appeals court rules that Christians may not be pelted with rocks for preaching the gospel by angry Muslims. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we will fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support HR 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that. But did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama, Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court-martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Thank you so much for watching PIJN News. An appeals court in Michigan has now ruled that Muslims in Dearborn, Michigan may not pelt Christians with rocks simply because the Christians are preaching the gospel on a public sidewalk or inside of a Muslim fair. CBS News and the Wall Street Journal both report that the pro-Muslim police in what I call Dearbornistan, Michigan, a heavily Muslim community, protected by pro-Muslim police, must now pay the Christian evangelists 
because they falsely arrested the innocent Christians and they threatened their freedom to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled in an eight to seven decision, which was heard by all of the judges on bank. Can you imagine how close it was? Eight to seven, the judges said, yeah, Christians have free speech rights. Boy, if it had gone the other way, Christians would not have free speech rights in Dearbornistan. But thankfully, the free speech rights of Christian activists were upheld and the court ruled that the police violated those rights by ordering the Christians to leave an Arab American festival or be ticketed and arrested during a confrontation with young Muslims in a Detroit suburb. The appeals court ruled on Wednesday in a sweeping decision that invoked First Amendment protections even if the message is offensive or repulsive to those Muslims who hate the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wall Street Journal reports that a federal appeals court ruled that local authorities in Dearborn failed to protect the constitutional rights of Christian evangelical preachers whose protests at Dearborn's Arab festival led to a miniature riot that ended with police escorting away, not the Muslims who were throwing rocks, they were not arrested, but they arrested the Christians who were peacefully holding signs and preaching the gospel on a public sidewalk. The fraught case was decided last Wednesday and asked how to balance public safety concerns against the First Amendment rights of anti-Islam protesters who were confronted by hecklers and pelted with debris. Of course, the Muslims did throw rocks at the Christians, but the police threatened the Christians and did nothing to stop the rock throwing Muslims. This dispute involved a protest by a group called Bible Believers at the Dearborn's 2012 Arab International Festival where they paraded with signs that some interpreted as hateful against Islam. And they actually get this, and I don't think I would do this, but it might be a free, free speech rights. They brandished a severed pig's head on a spike in the middle of the Muslims, which was seen as an insult to Islam in order to protect themselves. And it actually had the effect, the crowd dispersed. The Muslims backed away from the pig's head. So uh, a group of teenagers attending the festival did pelt the Christians with bottles, garbage, milk crates. They struck the Bible believers leader in the face, according to the court's opinion. This is all verified. And yet the police did nothing to protect the Christians. Instead, they threatened to arrest the Christians for disorderly conduct. So the Christians got in a van and they drove away. Weeks later, however, the Bible believers filed a lawsuit. They sued Wayne County and the county sheriff alleging that they violated the group's free speech and religious freedom rights. Last year, a splintered three judge panel of the Sixth Circuit ruled against the Christians. So they appealed on bank, not to the US Supreme Court, but to all 15 justices who sit upon the Sixth Circuit and they decided to hear the full case. This time, all 15 justices in the Sixth Circuit, the Cincinnati based appellate court heard the case and ruled eight to seven for the Bible believing Christians. It was a split vote, but the court said that local county officials, including the police failed in their duty to protect the rights of the Christian group, saying that their interest in keeping the peace did not justify ejecting the Christian protesters from the Muslim festival. Well, that's the news. Our thanks to CBS and the Wall Street Journal for that informative report. You know, let's take a moment and discern the spirits. There is a spirit of injustice, and that's an evil spirit that may have been operating inside of those biased policemen who are not protecting the constitution as they swore an oath to defend, who are not protecting the rights of Christians to preach the gospel on a public sidewalk or pass out copies of the gospel of John written in Arabic, ministering the gospel to a lost and dying Muslim community that without Jesus Christ will not inherit eternal life is the right of Christians. And despite how offensive these easily offended Muslims perceive the Christian message to be, they have a right to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ that can save their souls. This courtroom decision is a victory, not just for the rights of the preachers, it's a victory for the Muslims too, because now they have a right to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, which can save their souls from hell. Thanks be to God that the court got it right. Eight to seven decision, just imagine it, if it had gone the other way. 
it would have been an affirmation that the police can help the Muslim rock throwers punish and silence the gospel of Jesus Christ from preaching on the public sidewalk. Thank God that one judge didn't go the other way. Otherwise, the gospel would be silenced. Whereas in Dearborn, Michigan, the people have a right now to hear the gospel, thanks be to God. The Bible says this in Proverbs 21, it is a joy for the just to do justice, but destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name. And we praise you for this victory, Father, that Christian evangelists will have the freedom to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, even in the middle of Muslim territory, so-called, in the United States of America, we still have First Amendment protections to witness to our Muslim neighbors, to peacefully protest or carry signs that have Bible verses, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, even if the Muslims are angry, even if they pelt us with rocks, Father, now the police have to protect the Christians and not protect the rock throwers. Father, we pray for an end to the violence that the peaceful dialogue of interreligious dialogue would result in the salvation of many souls through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, a Muslim leader overseas argues the Quran gives him a right to kill people giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Let's take a stand with Israel today. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. And sign a petition to defend Israel, who is America's closest ally, certainly in the Middle East, if not in the entire world. We remember watching Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu give that speech at the UN when he warned about the making of an Islamic nuclear bomb, and that is being forged in Iran. But what are we doing now? The USA is negotiating with the Europeans to allow Iran to continue to develop nuclear material. Well, that's not right. Do we really trust this man, Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, who is the former nuclear weapons chief? You don't think they're gonna build a nuclear bomb when his predecessor, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, literally threatened to wipe Israel off the map of history. Now, we need to take a stand. Why is American foreign policy to fund the Muslim Brotherhood? Let's sign a petition to stop that. Stop sending our taxpayer dollars to fund the Muslim Brotherhood. And let's also sign a petition to protect the Jewish homeland. Both of those are available today at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. And when you sign those petitions, we will fax them to Congress. Instead, the failed foreign policy of the Obama administration, starting with Hillary Clinton and now John Kerry, is pressuring Israel to give up Jerusalem? Why? We should never divide the eternal capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem, and we should move the American embassy there. But instead, now the Obama administration is unfreezing the Iranian bank accounts, sending $7 billion to them on the hope of empty promises that maybe they'll stop their nuclear program. Let's defend Israel. The Jewish people are our friends. They have a right to security in their homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign that petition right now. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back and thank you for watching PIJN News. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. A Muslim leader in Norway has now gone on television saying that Muslims have the right to kill anyone who disrespects Islam. Eagle Rising reports that a video recently surfaced of an interview with a so-called moderate Muslim cleric on Norwegian television. And this video has gone viral because it shows that this Islamic leader, even in the West, in Europe, is being honest about what Islam teaches. He's just quoting the Quran and trying to explain it to us non-Muslims. Why is anyone confused about this? This is what the Quran teaches. And now I'm going to read to you some excerpts of that televised interview. By the way, it was translated into English from Norwegian we won't show you the original video, you wouldn't understand it, at least I wouldn't. Uh, but in response to questions about Muslim violence in Europe, particularly against non-Muslims, 
here's this Muslim leader. His name is Moa Krekar, and he told a Norwegian television host that not only is it okay for Muslims to kill non-Muslims, it's actually required by Quranic law. Further, the Imam says that, quote, Muslims have the right to kill anyone who does not respect Islam. So the Norwegian host asked him, for someone who burns the Quran, the punishment according to Islam is death. Is that correct? And the Mullah replied, Mullah Krikar now in Norway said, if you burn the Quran, which is an insult, then clearly the answer is yes. In other words, put you to death if you burn the Quran. So the host asked another question, but the man who has burned the Quran, would it be right that he loses his life even though he lives in Norway? To which the mullah responded, I know absolutely that he has committed a criminal offense where the punishment is death. In other words, yes, even in Norway they would kill these people. The responsibility for carrying out the punishment is on the Ummah, our version of the Muslim Brotherhood, regardless if he lives in Norway or if he is Barack Obama, put him to death. I am not myself threatening the person, I'm only telling you what is stated in the law, which is the Quran. I have told you what is in the Quran and in the Hadith. He must fear. Anybody who follows the Quran will have to fear the crime he has committed and fear that his punishment will be executed. Anybody who knows of this punishment can kill him, anybody. In other words, you don't need a government trial, just any Muslim mob on the street can go around killing people if they burn the Quran. Anybody, he says, we will defend our religion with our own blood. Our only limits are the limits of blood, limits made of explosives. Those who insult our religion must know that one of us will die. Those who insult our religion and our honor must understand that this is a matter of life and death. So after hearing those threats, the host of the Norwegian television show uh, asked another question. Would you be satisfied if this man gets killed? Well, Akrikar responded, yes, I would send a gift to the person who kills him. Why wouldn't I be happy about that? Well, that's the news. Our thanks again to this Norwegian television host who reported this, showed the transcript. Somebody translated that into English and was published on the Eagle Rising blog for us to find. Let's go ahead and discern the spirits. I think there is a demonic spirit, not just inside of this Mullah Krekar, but inside of his false prophet, Muhammad, who writes in the Quran that it's okay to kill non-Muslims. And now you can see this demonic spirit spreading from Mullah to student, from Mullah to student, all the Imams, all the Muslims who believe this heresy, who believe this demonic spirit are then inhabited by the spirit of murder, the spirit of death, who would not only obviously violate our First Amendment rights, they don't believe in the Constitution, but they would simply declare war against us and kill us. This is what their prophet teaches them to do. This is coming from a moderate Muslim in a Western country in Norway. He says, don't blame me, I'm just explaining what the Quran actually says. Well, thanks be to God, at least he's speaking the truth. But his truth is a very violent one at that. The Bible says this in Deuteronomy chapter 13, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass, of which he spoke saying, let us go after other gods which you have not known and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or the dreamer of dreams for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Let's pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus name for an end to the false prophecy of the false prophet Muhammad for an exposure of the truth of Jesus Christ, which says that we are to love our enemy and we are to care for the poor 
We're to show compassion and have the spirit of freedom. Father, we pray the spirit of freedom would be reestablished not only in America, but throughout Norway, throughout Europe, and even in the Middle East. God, give us victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a short break and I'll have a word to conclude the show. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Do you ever wonder how to discern your own thoughts from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit? or angels, or invisible demons. I'm Dr. Chaps, and you've seen us talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. In fact, I wrote my PhD dissertation, How to See the Holy Spirit, Angels and Demons. But now, we have an exciting 17-part video Bible study on a four-disc DVD set that you can get for your small group or your church. If you just visit PrayInJesusName.org, and offer a suggested donation of $99. Or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God. Get this 17 part video series and for a limited time only, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Get this important Bible study series for you and your church or call us at 866-Obey-God right now. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. I want to say a personal word of thanks to you, our faithful viewers, who are our regular financial supporters. Listen, I've been doing this now for three years. We've been on the air. Our thanks to the NRB Network, who helps host us, but we're also available on Roku. We're on uh, YouTube. You can find many of our shows archived at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Click on the YouTube link, and it'll take you to hundreds of shows that we've produced but we can't do it without your financial support. Please contribute if you can. I don't take a dime of salary from donations to our nonprofit. But the Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 11. One gives freely, yet grows richer. Another withholds what he should give and suffers want. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, but one who waters will himself be watered. If you need prayer, call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.